In this video, I'm going to be going over a low effort method on taking on Rassiel with very few clicks. So if that's something that's interesting to you, make sure to stay tuned. Let's dive in. About two months ago, I did upload a video doing this method, but on the mobile version. Since then, a lot has changed for the necromancy ability, including a brand new conjure that helps reduce damage. Along with that, I believe my skill set on making videos for you guys has improved by a good bit. So we're going to put all of these tools together to make one of the best videos for a low effort Rassiel kill. As for the requirements, they are going to be a little bit steep, but they have to be if you're going up against a boss that can take you out in about three hits. So to start things off, you're going to need the Alpha vs. Omega quest completed in order to be able to fight Rassio. With that being said, you're going to need 107 Herblore so you can make your Elder Overload salves, which you can boost up to that to make it possible. After that, you're going to need 90, 95 Necromancy so you can deal the damage towards Rassio. Plus, you need 95 Necromancy in order to complete the quest line of Alpha vs. Omega. After that, you do need 95 Prayer and Curses Unlocked because you're going to need Soul Split for this method. And 95 Prayers do work during this after that, you're going to need 89 Invention Unlocked so you can use your Ancient Gizmos on all of your equipment, which we will go over here in a little bit. After that, you're going to need 73 Summoning so you can at least use a Blood Reaver, but I do have a method that you can use a Hellhound instead of a Blood Reaver to save on profits. Now for the gear setup, we are going to be running 3-piece Crypt Loom and 2-piece Tier 90 Death Warden along with the Tier 90 weapons for necromancy just to show you that you don't need the tier 95s to get this done as a low effort as for the auras i like either using the vampirism aura or the aegis aura if you don't have the aegis aura you can easily get the vampirism aura through war's retreat with war himself as one of the rewards for killing the bosses either way using either familiar using either of these setups you are perfectly fine with either one of these and maybe even the inspiration aura with the new conjure coming out and your damage reduction being so much better now you can almost use any type of aura during this method and it will work perfectly fine for you as for the necklace slot we are going to be using the south amulet e which does increase damage to undead which rassiel is after that, we do have the Ring of Death, which does come crucial in the final phase against Rassio, but we will dive into that a little bit later when I show you some of my fights. In the ammo slot, we do have the Nexus to hold all of our Necromancy Ruins, and in our pocket slot, we do have the Scripture of Wen Godbook, just because I figured that having such the AoE beam hitting, there's also a chance of when he's under you, stunning you, you might be able to get one off that kills all of his little minions attacking you at the same time. As for the perks, they are not the best in slot perks whatsoever, and if anything, they are probably the farthest from best in slot perks. So for the Death Warden Rope Top, we do have Crackling 4, Crystal Shield 4. I will say that Crystal Shield 4 has saved me multiple times during this method. As for the Death Warden Rope Bottoms, I was using Lucky 6, Absorbative 1, unfortunately, and then I got Absorbative 4. I will tell you that these Rope Bottom perks are a mandatory thing to have. Have. without these this method will fail about 98 percent of the time because lucky six does negate so much damage over time and absorbative four is also there to help along with lucky six so i'm telling you now that these are a mandatory perk to have on your setup as for my death guard i do have aftershock one undead slayer this is to prove to you you don't need aftershock four undead slayer which is super super expensive but i did want to showcase that aftershock one does do enough damage to help you within this method as for the skull lantern i just went with something so simple as precise six which is super simple to get and it's not breaking the bank so precise six gets slapped into skull lantern as for the inventory, you're going to need your Elder Overload Salve, a Vit Pot, some Ceridome and Brews, and some Blue Blubber Jellyfish for the final phase, just in case. Now, the square pieces that you see there are called Attuned Portents of Restoration X, which you make out of Rock Tail and Incandescent Energy. And if you don't know what those do, when your health reaches about halfway, one will be used automatically to heal you 2300 points so these things do come into critical situations and are very very helpful 
Next, you don't have to use it unless you're just gonna be go, go, going. It is the powder of penance. And if you guys don't know what a powder of penance is, if you sprinkle it all over the ground and every time you get hit, you will regain a bunch of prayer, which will come handy during the fight with Rasio and all of his minions. Following up, you have your Blood Reaver Biting Contract and its scrolls or your Hellhound, depending on what way you want to go. Now you're gonna need Grasping Ruin Pouches or just normal Ruin Pouches. And if you have enough room in your inventory, Ruins for Prism of Restoration, which we'll get into when I show the fighting, and the Animate Dead spell, as long as you are using the Crypt Bloom Armor. We do have Vaughn Bombs inside of the inventory. You don't have to use them. I just like to use Vaughn Bombs almost anywhere I go when I PVM. I always throw one at the beginning with Rassio and maybe one right before we get into the final phase. After that, we have our Enhanced Excalibur. If you haven't unlocked, bring it almost everywhere you PVM. And our Ancient Elven Ritual Shard, which you're not going to need if you're using Powder of Penance. But if you're running without Powder of Penance just to get at least a single kill or maybe a kill here and there after banking, the Ancient Elven Ritual Shard is very useful. As for the relic powers, if you guys have it unlocked, if not, it's not that big of a deal breaker, but we are going to be using Death Ward for that extra 5% damage reduction, depending on how much life you lose, along with the Berserker's Fury with up to 5.5% extra damage, also depending on how much life you use. After that, we're going to be using Fury of the Small. More adrenaline, the better, especially when using Necromancy, and Fury of the Small just does that for you. As for the Blood Reaver and the auto attacks, you're going to want to set it to 6. You can always play with this for as comfortable as you feel, but 6 seems to be pretty ideal for this. So if you're working from Wars Retreat like I am, make sure to hit the bonfire to get that additional health before you actually go in. Now you got to go and get your preset, hit the bank. You got to run, gain your adrenaline before going, which is super crucial. If you forget that, you might as well just teleport right back to Wars Retreat. Then go through the portal and get ready for Rassiel. Now, before actually going into Rassio, you're going to make sure everything is activated. Your Vampirism Aura or your Aegis Aura, depending on what aura you're using. Your God Book, your Elder Overload South, your Powder of Penance if you're using it, your Animate Dead. You're going to make sure everything is active before you actually get in. All because everything else is crucial after this. So you're going to search across the arena. You're going to conjure your army and you're going to invoke death before Rassio spawns. And what I also like to try to do is I like to try to command my ghost and throw a Vaughn Bomb at Rassiel before my Revo Bar does all the work. And as for the Revo Bar, we're going to be using Death Skulls, Touch of Death, Conjure Army, Your Command Ghost, Living Death, Natural Instinct, Soul Sap, Command Skeleton, Residence, Reflect, Preparation, Debilitate, Volley of Souls, and Finger of Death. And with the way the setup is with this revolution bar, you can honestly just stand there and let the Revo bar do all of the work. Now, there is some instances where I like to manually input some abilities. For example, when all the minions are bundled up around you, you can use Blood Siphon to regen health and also unleash a massive attack on Rassio. If you didn't know that Blood Siphon does gain more power the more that you siphon from the enemies. I also like using the Death Guard special spec every once in a while, especially during the final phase, because you're not gonna be using your Necrosis stacks as much as you really think you're going to. So when you have all the stacks up to 12, you know you're gonna be doing a lot of damage when you actually use the Death Guard spec. So of course you wanna keep an eye on your health, but now you also wanna keep an eye on your familiar health. So right before phase four usually happens, you will want to use your Prism of Restoration. Since if your familiar is not alive during phase four, you're almost guaranteed not to make it through the final phase. Now the final phase might seem like it's almost impossible to do because you're just gonna get slammed with so many attacks. But what I like to do is watch my health. When my health goes about halfway, I like to activate my Enhanced Excalibur and let it start healing me up. At this point, you are still letting the Revo Bar do the Revo things. Now, there are some times where you might just want to walk around. You can if you want, just to negate a lot of the damage. But then you have the Ring of Death. When the Ring of Death procs, don't be afraid to just teleport immediately. You will have more than enough time after the Ring procs for you to be able to finish off Rassiel and also be able to collect your loot. And this is one of the main reasons why I suggest having the Ring of Death in the Ring slot because you're going to hit this type of thing often doing this method, but it is meant to do it because Rassio is 
honestly one of the hardest hitting bosses in the game and if you don't have a little backup plan like this to be able to make a method work then it's almost impossible to make a low effort method just like this for one of the hardest bosses in the game but once you finish off the first kill, you run back towards retreat, then you go and do everything all over again. You go get your preset, you regen all of your prayer, you go and get your adrenaline, you run through the portal. And at this point, you don't need to activate everything because everything was already activated. So all you have to basically do is sip on an Elder Overload salve you're going to go through the portal you're going to go and surge across the arena you're going to conjure your army you're going to invoke death and you're going to do everything all over again and let the revo bar just work this time you'll see during this fight i am using the aegis aura i wanted to test it out and see what it does and honestly the aegis aura did a lot better for me than the vampirism aura and once you start getting comfortable, you can start tweaking things a little bit for your liking. So if you have better perks for your armor and weapons, by all means, go after them. Especially if you have Aftershock 4 instead of the Aftershock 1. Make sure that you at least have the minimum of what I am showing you so you can make this method possible. Other than that, you guys, it's just pretty simple. It's straightforward. You let the Revo Bar do the work. And if you want to, you can also learn to start doing a little more manual play while doing this method with one of the better bosses in the game. So all you have to do is just make sure your health stays up and when the ring of death procs don't be afraid to teleport immediately and let it play out as you'll see during this fight i let the ring of death proc again and i didn't even fret i didn't even move from the certain spot that i was in and i just let everything still work its own course so whenever i finish off rassio i grab the loot i teleport back to wars retreat and i just repeat it over and over and over so even though these kills do take about three and a half to four minutes of killing Rassio, but I do believe that this is a way to learn the boss. I do also believe that this is a way to teach yourself how you can tinker with a bunch of stuff when it either comes to perks, whether it comes to relic powers, whether it comes to the gear, or even how you manually input abilities. But that does come an end to this video. If you guys found anything interesting or useful while watching this method, make sure to hit the like button. And if you guys are brand new to the channel and you would like to see more PVM content like this, make sure to hit that sub button, hit the bell icon so you guys know when I upload next. But until next time, guys, I hope you stay safe. See ya.